Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella and welcome to my channel where I make tech related videos. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my Notion setup for 2021. I honestly can't believe 2020 is already over. This year felt so long yet so short at the same time. But anyways, so since the new year is coming up, I decided to kind of revamp my Notion setup a little bit. And now that I'm done with the revamp, I'm going to be showing you guys what it looks like. So you probably know what Notion is since you clicked on this video, but in case you don't know, let me just quickly explain what Notion is. It is basically the perfect all-in-one app. You can take notes in Notion, you can make your to-do lists here, you can store a small database in here, you can organize your workflow for a project in here like you really can do everything in Notion and that's why I love this application so so much and I use this application in order to stay on track with my schoolwork and also to keep track of all of the YouTube things from like coming up with video ideas to tracking my YouTube growth and of course I use Notion for just regular life things as well so it's not just school and YouTube but it's really like my own personal life as well okay so the very first page that I have which is also the only page that I favorited because it is the page that I go to like first thing every single day. It is my day-to-day -day task list and as you guys can see right now it is super empty but these on the side were all my to-do lists for that certain day or that range of dates and the way that I use it now is actually a little bit different than how I used to use it. So what I used to do was create a new group for every single day and then underneath every single day were all of the to-dos for that day. So that was my my old system. Now I actually switched to just using a journal and some markers. I don't know, but like I kind of want to try out paper to-do lists. Even when I do it on paper, I pretty much do it the same exact way. I just make a new page each day and then I kind of categorize the list of things to do uh, like YouTube stuff, school stuff, life stuff, things like that. So because my day-to-day -day tasks have moved to my journal, this has now become sort of like a master or like longer term to-do list. So instead now I have one group called long term and these are all of the I guess like longer term to-dos so not things that I need to do that day specifically but more just like sometime like in the near future I need to get it done and then I created five groups for each of my five classes that I will be taking in the new semester and obviously right now I am on break so thank goodness I don't have any work but when I do have work I will probably like just create a new thing and probably categorize it in some way um, obviously I don't know for sure because I haven't taken those classes so I don't know like how I would want to categorize it but I think I would definitely categorize it like I just love categorizing things so yeah. Okay, all right, so that is my like master task list. Let's move on to the next page, which is miscellaneous notes. And yes, that's literally what it's called. Also, I don't know what this icon is. I just thought it was fitting for a page titled miscellaneous notes. Okay, so underneath miscellaneous notes, I actually have more pages. Like these are all pages. So miscellaneous notes is exactly what it sounds like. It's just like whatever notes that I take that are just like random. Random, I store it underneath there. So for example, like I wanted to learn more about Procreate, it's stored under there. I wanted to learn more about how to use my camera, stored under there. And then also for my internship offer, I had to take a few notes on the offer details. So it's also just stored underneath there. It's kind of nice having like a miscellaneous place, especially for someone like me who loves categories. Because sometimes like when I want to take notes on something new and I don't know where to put it, then um, putting it underneath miscellaneous is perfect. I can't just like leave it sitting out there. That would just make me kind of uncomfortable. So yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, and now let's move on to the next one, which is my YouTube project. So this is actually the first like page out of many YouTube pages to follow. And underneath this page is more like static things. So I actually don't really change the content in these pages that much. It's just things that I wrote like in the beginning when I was brainstorming, where I want to take my channel, what I want the direction of my channel to be. So it's all here. And then also I have a section called YouTube thoughts, where it is actually this gallery view. And inside of my YouTube thoughts, I really just like write down thoughts that I have to myself. Sometimes if I get stressed about my views, I would just like sit down and write a note to myself and calm myself down. So this is just like a nice place for me to dump all of my like YouTube stress and YouTube
YouTube thoughts into. Okay, and the next page is my YouTube diary. I know, cute name, right? So this is actually in the form of a table and it's really just for me to track my own growth. I track it weekly. Every week I track the amount of subscribers I gained, the amount of views I gained, and also the amount of money I earned. And it's really nice to be able to see my growth so that I know exactly what my growth is. Okay, and moving on to the next page. So this is where I keep track of all of my videos. So I write down the title of every single video that I've published and actually all of these lead to a page. So like for example, if I click on this one, it will lead me to this page where I essentially like wrote out the script and also wrote out what I want my title and thumbnail to look like, like basically just all of the information pertaining to this video. Okay, so these are the things that I keep track of for each video. I keep track of its status. It can either be something that I'm currently scripting or about to film, about to edit, or published. And then ask for type. So I keep track of this in order to ensure that there is a good variety of different types of videos on my channel. And um, these aren't like, I guess, set in stone types. Like there are definitely videos that are of type other, but I guess in general, my videos do fall into one of these types more or less. And then I also keep track of the kind, which is kind of weird because like, what's the difference between kind and type? I really don't know. I just made up these rules. This is really for like views so um sometimes like i would want to make a video that's attention grabbing and interesting that would probably drive a lot of views in the beginning and then kind of like die down um, and then other times maybe i would want to make a video that's highly searched so like maybe it wouldn't get a lot of views in the beginning but then like slowly over time it would rise and start to get more views and then um jackpot jackpot means that it is both attention grabbing and interesting and highly searched so this means that i expect this video to do very well in the beginning and continue to do very well for a long time because people will be searching for it and of course while i want to make every single one of my videos a jackpot video that is just impossible Possible to do so yeah I don't have that many like jackpot videos and then um, the last one is a flop so like just like videos that are kind of like a mistake I guess like videos that really don't make sense views wise for me to make and of course like not every single video of mine has to do very well sometimes if there's a topic that I want to make a video on um, I'll just make it but overall it's still good to keep track of videos that flop just in case in the future I want to make another video that's similar to that one then I I kind of like know what to expect. Okay, and then the last thing that I keep track of, this is pretty boring, um, this is just the publish date. And the reason why I keep track of the publish date is because in Notion, one of the cool things that you can do is you can change the view. So right now in the default view, this is just a table, but if I switch this over to calendar view, then this is actually what I see. And this calendar view just makes it really easy for me to see um, when I publish videos. And this isn't like particularly helpful in any way, but still it is nice to see like when I uploaded videos in this calendar. Okay, and yeah, that is it. Now let's move on to the next two pages. So one is called video ideas dump and the other one is called tech video categories. And both of them are really just places for me to brainstorm videos. I really can't explain why I have two. I made the video ideas dump page first, but then one day I just like spontaneously made a tech videos category. So this is just what I'm working with because it does work for me. I might merge these two pages together someday, but for now, like I honestly don't mind having two different pages where I plan out my content. Okay, and we are nearing the end. So underneath my life page, um, I have all of these sub pages actually. Actually. So these are all sub pages. Let me just quickly go through each of them. So life thoughts, brain dump, exactly what it sounds like, just like brain dump on random things in life. That's the best way that I can describe it. Um, there's really like no theme. It's really just life in general. And then I have my plans. So this is where I write out my plans for a certain period in life. So for example, I recently just wrote up a plan for winter break uh, that includes everything that I want to do during winter break. And the reason why I like making plans is just so that I am not like moving forward in life aimlessly. Like I know um, what I want to do. This way I'm actually accomplishing things that I want to do instead of always just like putting things in the back burner. And then the next page is my Vancouver semester page. This is just a reflection of the semester that I spent in Vancouver and I'm just writing this really for myself just to like 
you know, reflect on life. I think it's good to reflect on life from time to time. And then I have my wish list, which is just like list of things that I want to buy. And the reason why I started this is to prevent myself from just like randomly spending money. One of the things that I like to do, especially when I'm procrastinating, is go online shopping. And before I literally used to just like buy things like spontaneously and then I would wonder why like there's always no money in my wallet. So now having this wish list helps me to like spend my money more mindfully. I write down the things that I actually want and need and then I slowly buy them. And this way when I'm just like randomly online shopping, I'm not tempted to just like spontaneously check out just because I can. But instead I'm like, okay, like you want, you know, a new camera lens, like, you know, like this thing is only $10, but this $10 can go to towards your camera lens, so don't buy it. And yeah, it's, it's it just helps like keep myself in check. And the next one is my diary. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's just where I write down thoughts. It's kind of similar to like my brain dump, but the diary is more, I guess, more for like intense thoughts. Like sometimes like if uh, a situation or an event happened and I have like a lot of thoughts in my head about it, then I would write about it in my little diary section. Whereas like life thoughts brain dump is more, I guess, like everyday things. Okay. And the next one is my expenses and income tracker. Um, yeah, for the longest time, I like didn't really track my expenses. I kind of just tracked it through like my bank account statements, which is not a great way to do it. So now I'm like actually tracking my expenses and income properly. And the very, very, very last page is a page called done. So this way, for example, if I create a new page uh, for a certain event, um, for example, like during internship recruiting season, I created a lot of pages just for internship recruitment. But then after I got an offer, I was done with recruitment. So then I put all those pages underneath the done. That way they're like gone from my site. They're not in my sidebar anymore. And it just helps to reduce the clutter in my notion. Okay, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this notion tour. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and also please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below if you want to see more content from me. And I will be back very soon with more tech related content. So I will see you in another one of my videos. Bye!